So people pay for the rare thing, the scarce thing, rather than create artificial scarcity. Right? The, the artificial scarcity never makes sense because it's like saying, you know, metering air. Right? That's the sort of concept. And people, sure, will try it. But that's because we're looking at scarcity economics to say no one pays for anything unless it is scarce. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to make it scarce. You know, that's cartels, what people have tried to do with diamonds, with oil, with airline prices, you name it. But that cannot be a just way of proceeding. So in today's world, information is like air. Yep. I mean, the, I think it was uh, Don Marty at the, one of the Linux journals who said information wants to be five ninety nine. Uh, the premise is, sure, there is a price to pay for information. Right? That someone has to pay for creating an infrastructure that can store it, for being able to move it around, for being able to, act, you know, to get to it easily, for being able to enrich it, for being able to bring it back. Because there's lots of things we want to do with information. You know? We want to search for things. And we have to get better and better tools for searching. Right? We need to get better at being able to subscribe to things. And again, you know, I think RSS is probably one of the critical yet simple technologies in the last decade that have transformed how a knowledge worker can work. Right? Now you can subscribe to things, you know, you can pick up feeds, right? You can get alerts so much more easily. Right? But at the same time as being able to search for information and to syndicate or subscribe to information. We also know that we need to be able to visualize it better, right? Where the, the information overload type problem doesn't go away if you don't have far better ways of being able to look at something, right? But we've gone so far away from the text of the past. Now you have, you know, people who use heat maps, right? People who look at something like the, the London tube map and say, what a wonderful way of being able to, to represent quite a lot of information in a way someone else can comprehend. You know, you get contour maps, uh, you have people who come along and provide fractal ways of representing stuff, 3D visualizations. Uh, there's a lot of interest now in saying, uh, as the quantum of information has increased, as the flow of information has increased, how can we use tools to be able to simplify our access and our comprehension? And I love the tools that are coming through.